So after the painting process, uh, you know, the first thing that a, a garage painter like myself does after it dries is you, you want to see what it looks like with the wheels on it. So I did, I put it, put it on the wheels, looks great. You know, obviously that, that wasn't something that needed to be done at that point and, um, and actually kind of slowed things down a little bit because I needed to take the wheels back off to kind of finish up the cutting and buffing. But um, I'm at the point now where I've gone through all of those stages with wet sanding, um, rubbing compound, polishing. Uh, I still have a couple more steps to do. I'll kind of walk you through what I've used so far. Uh, but just kind of an overall statement. Um, you know, painting's a lot of work, without a doubt, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. I had literally zero experience um, with painting a car going into this. And while I have not produced a masterpiece, um, I've produced something that frankly is a little bit better than I thought it would be, which is a pleasant surprise. But more importantly, um, I did it myself and, I, you know, kind of, kind of going into this car, I wanted to do everything myself. You know, um, and, and not even there's not even a little asterisk there that says within reason. I, I really wanted this to be something I did soup the nuts, and that of course included the paint. Um, it's not like I could have afforded to hire somebody out to, to paint this car, um, and I think what I've produced is far better than what I probably could have afforded if if I tried to figure that out. So, um, but before I kind of get into the the car itself, I figured I'd show you what the products are that I used to get to this point and what my stages were and I'll give you a quick little few blurbs on what each stage kind of felt like. Um, again, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm thinking back what I would have liked to have seen before I went into this project. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube that relates to painting a car, um, cutting, and, you know, cutting and buffing a car, uh, how to get rid of orange peel, you know, uh, all of those things but you never see anything actually with somebody specifically painting a cobra and to steal a term from uh, a comment on um, one of my videos it's like painting a bowling ball you know everything's round and and uh it's it's a more difficult car to paint and to buff and do all of that because of all of those um convex and concave curves all over the car not a, not a flat not a flat panel on this car so let me show you the products I used and then uh, I'll do a quick walk around the car and show you the stage I'm at so so this was my approach um, and uh, I, I first I want to preempt this by saying I practiced on a panel that I had sprayed um, prior to doing the car uh, well I should say right as I was painting the car I was I painted a, a test panel a two by two piece of aluminum that um, allowed me to kind of practice before I went at the car. So, uh, and that's what I did and this is what I came up with. So I started with a thousand grit um, on a DA sander and orbital sander, uh, wet. I never went dry with any of these. So after the uh, clear coat, everything that touched that clear coat has been wet. Um, the goal here was to knock down the orange peel, which, <laughs> which I definitely had. Uh, interestingly enough, this, this thousand grit paper, this is uh, um, Harbor Freight stuff, was really not that aggressive. I actually almost felt like I would have gone to something more aggressive. It took a long time to knock this orange peel down. I, I mean, rather that than actually burning through it, so that's good. Uh, so there I went from 1,000 wet uh, to 2,000. Um, the 2000 completely got rid of any of the uh, scrape marks, uh, the grit marks from the 1000, and this again was something I practiced. I actually have 1500 that I could have put in between these two, but I saw no need for it, and, and, and that was a good decision. Uh, so after the 2000, um, and I, I went back and forth between the DA and the areas that I couldn't quite reach with that, I, I used a hand sander and a foam block. Then I went to um, the Meguiar's uh, 110 with the yellow pad, which is a lightweight. Um, I never, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't end up kind of doing the system that was recommended, which was going with the uh, two pads that were firmer than this. Um, I started with this one. Again, this was soft enough where it kind of around allowed me to paint this bowling ball of a car. I, I mean, uh, polish this bowling ball of a car. So, uh, so in the Harbor Freight 
system, whatever you want to call it, uh, yellow with the 110. And then I went from there to the ultra fine, which is the soft white. It's very soft. Uh, and then I finished up with the 210, which is a polish finishing polish, although I think I'm going to go one step further. There's, there's a, I think, an ultra fine out there. I still see a little bit of a haze, but that also could be just because I haven't really wiped the car down good. Uh, and then the whole thing was done with this thing. Um, kind of a cheapy, but hey, it, it, it worked really well. It vibrates the, the hell out of your hand, but, but um, and then a ton of those. Uh, as you saw in the video, every time I kind of finished the operation, I went at it with one or two of those, and just to kind of do a, a, a check on where I was. So let's look at the car and I'm gonna walk you through it. It is smooth, uh, trying to get an area here. It's kind of late in the day, there's no sun, but, um, but you can kind of see pretty good. I mean, if you dive into that, that reflection of the light there, you definitely see some orange peel. peel. But this is, you know, if I compare this to the factory finish on my um, Volkswagen, yes, I drive a Volkswagen, um, it's about the same. So I, I call that a win. Uh, you can see I still have, I still have to wipe this down. There's still a bit of a haze on it here. But this is, this is where I'm at. And uh, I love it. You know, I, I um, after polishing this up, it, it reconfirms my decision on this brown color. Um, I really like it, and it looks great with the gunmetal rims. So this is where I'm at now. Um, the uh, next step as I'm walking around here, I see some areas I missed, so I'm going to be going back at the edges of the, uh, the hood here and the doors, unless that's just haze, which it could be. Um, yeah, I've got a little bit more work to do, definitely, as I'm walking around this thing. But um, hey, I'm, I'm happy, and anything I'm seeing right now is easily fixed and polished out. So next step is to start assembly. Um, i got to gap these doors, too. Uh, or I should say align the doors. Oh, the gapping's over, believe me. Um, but I have to align these doors. Uh, so the next step is to assemb assembly. And uh, cleaning first, clean the inside, clean everything I can, and then finish up on the aluminum panels underneath, and then move on. So that's what you'll start to see next, is this car looking more like a car. Uh, so these are the aluminum panels, the fender panels. Um, they, uh, they are uh, very clearly undersized, so I had to add this piece here, no, no biggie. Um, what I've decided to do, what I've decided to do here is I'm gonna lay, I have this eighth inch rubber you've seen me use kind of over and over in a couple places. This is uh, I don't know, 16th thick. It's it's flooring rubber. Get it at a Home Depot. It's super cheap stuff. Um, it glues really well though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna glue this 
here. And um, this will be that sound deadening. So any rocks or anything kind of flying up on the inside of the fender are going to hit this and not make that um, horrible aluminum rock against aluminum sound. So first what I'm doing is I'm sanding the inside of this to give the adhesive a little more bite. And then, and then I'm going to using spray adhesive and then rivets, kind of rivet it in place. And that's what you're going to watch here. Um, I'm going to do this in all four corners. Well, here we go. This is the, the finished part. Um, I used uh, rivets there to kind of fortify the adhesive between the, the rubberized piece here and the aluminum. Um, I think this is de definitely going to work better than any, uh, any type of spray-on material I could have used. Uh, nothing's going to, it's not going to wear out. It's not going to, you know, dent or ding. Um, and it should dampen any type of road noise in terms of things hitting that inside fender section. So happy with it. And one more thing to cross off my list.
Well, here's the first time out in the sunshine after it's been buffed and pol or cut and polished, cut and buffed, whatever you call it. Um, and uh, what a difference that extra polishing step made to bring in this color out. Um, pretty happy about this. Uh, I was shooting for a shooting for something um, not perfect because I'm going to be driving this thing all the time and I'm no painter and I shouldn't expect perfect so there are little bits and pieces here that aren't great but my goal was to get the overall impression to be acceptable and to get a color that I really like and um, I think I hit those targets you know there, there's a couple little runs I saw in the clear coat and I can buff those out little things that I don't think I can buff out but all in all um, you know the hood section came out great no issues there the hood scoop I like the way that kind of dies in there and um, finish is nice you know nice and smooth shadows a little bit of orange peel still hiding under there but I'm not doing anything with that but this is, uh, again, this is going to be a, a driver, you know, I'm not, not doing shows with it, so if somebody wanted to really go at this, they would find issue, but I don't. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy. I like the way the colors are lining up between the grays and the dash. You know, the, the gray and in that inset section of the dash there is the same gray as the roll bar, which is the same gray as the rims. So. Very happy. I'm hoping the video is coming out okay. But uh, yeah, this is a this is definitely a big, big old check mark in the wind column for me. I know I've said it before, but I uh, I painted a car. <laughs> so that's where we are now. Um, back to uh, some more final assembly.